When you're building client sites, one of the difficulties is how to display a lot of information in a non-repetitive way. So I had already built a grid layout like this to display all of the services, and farther down the page we had more information that we wanted to convey, but we didn't want the page to be super long. And so I built this kind of static scrolling image changer where you can display a lot of information and as the new item comes into view, it'll brighten up here and show its corresponding image and then as the next one comes into view the previous ones will fade out and you can scroll through content like this so this is definitely like a much different way to display lots of information and so it makes the page feel a little bit more alive more dynamic and less repetitive so i want to go over this plugin that i've built and how you can install it on your site once you purchase it so the first thing that you'll want to do is go ahead and add a new section where you want this scrolling to be on the page. So I'll click add section and I'll go to the people tab and we want to add a simple list auto layout section. So if you choose this one here in the upper right, it just looks like a normal grid, then you'll be good to go. Next, we'll want to edit the content. And on this tab, you're going to want to toggle the title on. And then show image, show title, and show body should all be toggled on. And if you want each item to have a corresponding button, you can show the button as well. For my needs, I don't need a click through, so I'm just going to leave that off. Now, I think it'll be easiest if I first go ahead and just trigger this plugin to work, and then we can go over customizing it. So I'm going to head to the size and space tab. And the first thing that I'm going to do is change the space between elements, the space below section title. I need to change that to 291 pixels. So I'm gonna change this to 291 and then go ahead and hit save. And that's what triggers this plugin to function. So now if I go ahead and hit exit, we should see that we now have our scrolling logos and you can see here, everything is appearing, but we need to customize the layout in order for it to kind of appear much better than it is right now. So now we can go over kind of the customization of it. So the next thing that we're gonna wanna do is go to the content tab and you can decide which side you want the image to be on, whether you want it to be on the left or the right. So I'll edit the content and I'll go to the content tab. And this is where you're gonna change, you know, your image, your title and your description. If you've enabled a button, then you can change the button text and URL there as well. Uh, but the way to change the image is by changing the title alignment. So if you have it aligned to the left, it'll be on the left. If you align it to the right, then you can have the image be on the right. So kind of cool functionality there. I'm just going to leave the default content as is. And the title doesn't matter because it's hidden. We're just using the title to make that 291 pixel value trigger the plugin to function. So next we'll go to the design tab. For the simple list uh, option, you want to make sure that's selected and it's not one of these other two. Next, the alignment is just the text alignment here. So I like left aligned. I think that looks best. The content order doesn't matter. The max columns also doesn't matter. So you can just leave that as is. For the image crop, you can change this to be whatever you want it to be. Personally, I think like a square works the best. It just seems to like fit the section the best. Next, you can go to the style tab and change the text size. If you click the three dots, you can change the item title and the description independently. And just make sure that you don't uh, toggle on the card option that needs to be toggled off. Next, we can go to the size and space panel. For the layout width, you can set it to full if you want it to be a little bit wider. Personally, I like it to be set to inset so that it lines up with the rest of the content on my site. For the media width, this controls the size of the image. So if you wanted the image to be a little bit smaller, you could hit medium. If I just hit save and I exit this, it'll trigger the plugin. So now that I've saved and exited and then come back in, we can now see the plugin triggering again. So I'll click edit content and I'll go back to design and size and space. And so next we have the media width. Uh, that I was mentioning before. And so here you can see better how the media width affects, you know, the size of the image in this section. The media placement doesn't matter because it'll always be centered uh, due to my plugin code. Next, we have the content width. So again, you know, you can make that 
um, smaller if you want to, or have it be large and it'll fill the full half of the screen. Next, we have the space between items. And so this is the space between columns, is the space between the content and the image. So that's this space here. And then the space between rows is the space between each item. So instead of doing pixel values, I actually like to do viewport width values because those are a percentage of the width of the viewport. So as the screen gets smaller, the gap will get smaller. As the screen gets bigger, the gap will get bigger. So I like using 10 viewport width units because it just seems to be kind of like a nice spacing, but of course you can change it to whatever you want. If you want them to be a little bit more spaced out, you can change the spacing between the rows to 15 and now they're farther apart. So next we have the space between elements. The space below the section title, again, this triggers the plugin. This is really important. If you're not seeing this value when you're setting it up, you have to make sure in the elements that you have the title toggled on. Otherwise, you won't see that setting, um, and that is the most important setting. Next, we have the space between the image and text. This doesn't matter for desktop, but it does apply on mobile, because on mobile, everything stacks. So if you wanted a little bit more space between all, uh, your image and your content, then you could uh, change that, and that will apply on mobile. Again, doesn't have any effect on desktop though. And then next, the space below the item title, that'll apply to both mobile and desktop. So you would see that change um, also applying on desktop. Set that to whatever you want it to be. And then next, we have the vertical padding. That's just uh, the like padding on the section, essentially, how tall it's going to be. Doesn't apply to desktop. By default on desktop, the section will always fill the screen. But on mobile, you might want to change that setting and adjust the padding on mobile. So if I go back to size and space, the vertical padding you can see is having a, an effect on mobile. So set that to whatever you want. And then the position, leave this as top. This is really important. You don't want to change this position setting. And that's it. That's all of the different settings that you can control. And you can see we now have this cool like rotating image changer effect, which is great. If you go to edit section, you can change the colors on this. So maybe you wanna do like a dark theme like I had before. Again, once you hit save, um, it'll then trigger the plugin. So if you make a change, you might see it like not applying, but don't worry, once you hit save, you'll then see it apply again. And then on mobile view, everything just stacks. I'm gonna set this back to a light theme. To make this much easier to use in the future, go ahead and click save section once you have it set up how you like it. Uh, and now I can exit. And if I wanted to add this to a different page, I could easily do that. So if I just add a new blank page and I'll just leave it as new page, it doesn't really matter what I call it. I just wanna show how easy it is to now add this to other pages on the site. So if I hit save and exit, you'll then see that it's saved, perfect. So you can even duplicate this section too. So maybe I want one light and then down below it, I can have one be dark. So I'll go to the colors, I'll change it to dark. And then on this one, I think I want the content to be on the other side. So let me go ahead and hit left on this one. And now we'll have like an alternating scrolling, one being light, pretty cool. And then on this one, it fades in and this one is dark. So there you go. Once you get it set up, it's super easy to use on other pages of the site. So go ahead and check out this plugin on my shop. I hope you enjoy it. If you like this video, check out this other video. I have a scrolling logos plugin that I think you'll also really enjoy.